While Henry VIII used drastic means to get rid of Anne Boleyn, 300 years later, England's George IV had a harder time shedding an unwanted wife. His troubles began while he was still Prince of Wales. Young George was a charmless prince, a heavy drinker and a gambler, particularly fond of horse racing. He consistently lost huge sums, owing debts equivalent today to tens of millions of dollars. He constructed huge luxury housing for the rich, like these mansions in London's Regent's Park. It was here the prince threw wild parties for his friends, dancing and drinking until dawn. George decorated the exteriors with sensual erotica, some reflecting his preference for older women. The English loathed George for his decadence and indifference to his subjects. His father, the mentally unstable King George III, tolerated his dissolute son until he finally went too far. In 1785, the king discovered his son and heir had secretly married a Mrs. Fitzherbert. Under the constitution, British monarchs were forbidden to marry Catholics or divorcees, and Mrs. Fitzherbert was both. She could never become Queen of England. The king ordered them to separate. But his son would only comply if his gambling debts were cleared. The nation's treasury was forced to cover the prince's huge losses. His secret marriage was then annulled and an official marriage was arranged for the prince. His bride was Princess Caroline of Brunswick. Her portrait was sent to George and met with his approval, but court painters often depicted their subjects in flattering ways. George was in for a surprise. The day before the wedding, George nervously awaited his bride in eager anticipation. A woman arrived and headed straight for George. She was introduced as his future wife. Prince George was aghast. She was short, fat, smelly and ruddy-faced. Though no paragon of beauty himself, the prince recoiled, muttering, Ah! I am not well! For heaven's sake, bring me a glass of brandy. George remained drunk throughout his wedding day and had to be propped up at the ceremony. Disconsolate, he wept throughout the entire service. On his wedding night, the inebriated George passed out in the fireplace instead of consummating the marriage. In the morning, he dragged himself to Caroline's bed and performed his royal duty for the first and last time. The fertile princess became pregnant after this solo encounter, but within weeks the couple had separated for good. George remarked to a friend, I'd rather see toads and vipers crawling over me dinner than sit at the same table with her. Cartoonists gleefully rushed to sketch the royal marital farce. George left his wife to return to Mrs. Fitzherbert and a string of matronly mistresses. Spurned by her husband, the vivacious and flamboyant Caroline enjoyed her freedom. She tried on makeup, ate large quantities of onions and drank brandy. She invited friends to her house and many men into her bedroom. She considered sex a happy and healthy activity, describing herself as... A little devil in petticoats. I have a bedfellow whenever I like. Nothing is more wholesome. Scandalized London society was filled with rumors of Princess Caroline's affairs. It was even said she had another child by a prominent noble, Sir Sidney Smith. But the guileless Princess Caroline didn't realize that Prince George, eager to prove her adultery for a divorce, was spying on her. One of her servants reported to the prince, Mary Wilson said to me how she went into Princess Caroline's bedroom in order to make up the fire. But she found her and Sir Sidney in such an indecent situation that she immediately left the room and was so shocked that she fainted away at the door. The prince's evidence was hearsay, and a special commission found it unconvincing, but vicious court gossip forced Caroline to leave England for an extended tour of Europe. 
During her visit to Italy, the irrepressible Caroline rode through the streets of Milan in a pink feathered hat and a dress which showed off her ample posterior and stout legs. There, Caroline met her true love, a handsome but penniless Italian adventurer named Bartolomeo Pergami. They traveled together through Europe, making no attempt to disguise their intimacy. Six years later, Caroline learned that King George III had died and her husband had become King George IV. The princess headed for England to become queen. George offered her a king's ransom of more than $2 million a year to stay away, but Caroline refused to be bought off and went back to England. Desperate to get a divorce, George launched an official investigation into Caroline's love life. An English naval officer reported that Caroline switched cabins to be next to her lover. An Italian servant testified she made regular visits to her lover's bedroom and that he saw them kiss in public and bathe together in private. Caroline's cook claimed to have caught the couple on a sofa in the throes of love. But tenacious Caroline fought for her position as queen. She hired a tough defense lawyer who publicly hinted at the hypocritical king's own adulterous affairs and cowed the witnesses. One witness replied, I do not remember, 87 times. The divorce failed, so in spiteful revenge, George refused to let Caroline attend his coronation. Though a sympathetic public sided with her, the humiliated Caroline lost her will to fight. A few weeks after the coronation, Princess Caroline, a king's wife but never a queen, died from a blockage of the bowel. She had become a victim of love and social hypocrisy, leaving the equally adulterous king to receive a dispensation to finally remarry his old love, Mrs. Fitzherbert.